We are going to make ourselves a GIF uh, file of this Cavendish Gang logo to put in our, our page. So um, this is an Illustrator file. The easiest way to um, get this out, I've also got another uh, Cowpokes logo up here that I don't want to use at the particular at this particular time. So I'm going to go to the Slice tool here, and I'm going to slice this thing out. And you can start from any corner. I think since I've got a little more point of reference here, I'm going to start down in this corner. And I can see I cut off of some type, but that's OK. So I get this pretty tight. And then I can adjust it using the Companion to Slice tool, the Slice Select tool. So I can go over here and just going to use the Slice Select tool to move move things around as as needed. So I've got that selected. And of course with the slice tool, each particular slice that you choose can be optimized um, in a different fashion, different format, different color level, or cover, color numbers, qualities, all this cool stuff you do. So let's make our Cavendish, Cavendish Gang logo. So we go here to save for web and devices. And here we have um, the logo selected. You could select any slice, but we only want this particular slice. If I double click it, I could even go in here and say, um, OK, oops, crazy, crazy type. Okay, Cavendish logo. I can name it. If I was doing a complete web page out of an Illustrator file, I could put URLs, targets, messages, um, alt tags, the whole shoot and match in here. Um, I don't need to. Uh, it's also got a mat choice. Uh, we don't have to do that at this point because we can do it over here. So the, the issue of the mat. Um, we'll change this to a GIF. It's going to pick out the 32 colors that it thinks are the very best. It's uh, by default matting to a white background because that's sort of what it, what it knows and loves right here. Um, if I was to say no mat, and um, a little word of mat, anti-aliasing, the pixels around the edge that um, they aren't black, they aren't clear or white, they're partially black, so shades of gray. Here's the brown color. Um, it's going from different shades of brown, so it sort of blends into any background, it, it or blends into the background it hits, not any background. Uh, now, the problem is that these gray and light tan pixels if they go over a colored background, they're going to look horrible. That They're going to have a white fringe. So I have two choices. I can have no anti-alias pixels, which means it would go over anything. So I can go here to none. Choice one is none. It's just completely block, stair-step, ugly, zippery looking things. But you can put that over any colored background that you choose. and it's going to blend right onto the background without any fringe at all. You'll notice the color table changed quite a bit. It used to have these both both rows filled up and uh, it doesn't have it anymore because it doesn't need as many colors to anti-alias out to the side. Um, back to the, this is what it would do with white. Um, now, if we had a particular color, like the footer color, I'm just going to take a wild guess here. It's a dark green, some something like this. Um, if this were uh, my real graphic, I would go to the, the HTML I'm working on, find the color that I'm putting in the footer, which is where I wanted to put these things, and I would um, get that exact color number. But this is uh, as close as I'm going to go. And so now you notice that it's got a fringe of the dark green color here. So that means that when this particular 
GIF image goes over my uh, my dark green color, it's going to mat out um, that. Let's go to 64 just to see if that makes any difference. And uh, at a certain point, you just don't gain any more. So 64 with the more complex colors, probably a good number of colors in my in my index color palette. So these are the two choices that uh, that you have to deal with the blending of a transparent GIF image into a background. The matte is going to go over that particular green um, beautifully, nice smooth edges. If it doesn't have um, a matte, it'll go over anything, but it's going to be really choppy. But that is the the secret behind making these things um, fit over backgrounds. Now one more issue. We have image size. And um, if we go back and look at the, the whole thing, it's telling me the image size of my document, which is this whole thing here. And I really don't want it that big. I wanted it um, smaller. So I'm going to put in like something 222. Um, this would take a little little figuring. I could do a ratio by looking at the number of pixels across this, the number of pixels of this, and then figure out, um, because it's telling me the width of the entire page, what width of the entire page would be needed to give me a certain width here. So if I wanted 200 here, I'd have to figure out what size this would be. Kind of annoying, but, you know, if you're if you're doing a complete mock-up, then everything is in the right size because you build your mock-up page to the right pixel dimensions. But in this case, I just built the logo. So I'm scaling it down as I go. I'm taking a wild guess, and I will get something. And you apply it, and then it shrinks it down, just in view form. And there's the the no matte version of it and you can see how um, how really choppy it's going to look and so in this case maybe going to the other color picking ourselves uh, like the dark green you can see the dark green is going to smooth out those edges so that is um, those are the, the moves to make you can name your, your slice, you can export it with or without a mat, you can change the mat color, you can scale it down to the original size so you don't have to build everything at the, at the final size, you can work bigger if you need to, and choose your, your file format, and that's kind of the, the way it goes.